What's going on? What's going on? This is Pastor John here uh, for the 5 Before Podcast. Um, hopefully, you guys can hear me. Um, we are mobile today, and uh, we are... How crazy is this? Those of you are watching the video, I'm sitting in the Legends office right now doing a podcast, and I guarantee you, if you would have went to Mr. Madden 20 years ago, and I asked him if he ever thought that John Belangie was going to do a podcast about Jesus in his office. Uh, he would have told you you were crazy. Now, he was just a math teacher back then, but if you don't know who Mr. Madden is, he is a legend in Lincoln County. He is a legend uh, in our school system. And it is just nuts to think that I'm sitting in Henry Madden's office, Mr. Madden's office, doing a podcast it is just crazy to me man it just shows you how god can this is like walk on water miraculous okay um and i told somebody a little while ago how many of you guys have been watching the documentary on mj on michael jordan uh, called the last dance well mr madden just retired um he nobody ever thought this man was going to retire and i said we need to do a follow-up last dance uh documentary series the only person that could take a step up from Michael Jordan would be the last dance of Mr. Madden because he has been in this thing for forever and it is just not going to be the same around the school without him. Uh, we are here mobile today. It is exciting because we are actually loving on our students here in Lincoln County from Lincoln County High School. We have brought gifts out to every single high school senior um, in our county and we are thrilled to be able to love on those guys and gals and uh, tell them that we believe in them and that we love them. And so, yeah, it is a really cool day. And we are mobile today uh, from Mr. Madden's office, the assistant principal. Now, I didn't go to school in this building, so I don't have a lot of memories in this building. But there are a lot of nightmares in the other principal room at the old high school. So, luckily, I can sit in here without fear and trembling. Um, and I don't have to think about all the... Uh, Paddling, yeah, listen, if you didn't know this, there was a day that people actually hit you with a stick, and it was a big, actually, let me rephrase, they hit you with a board, and just so it would hurt more, they drill holes in it, so that that way the air can pass through it in an even, even greater capacity. That's Listen, now we're worried about, like, hurting our kids with paddling. There was a day that they did everything they could to hit you harder, and so um, those are the memories that I have, but... Um, no memories in this office, so we are mobile from Mr. Madden's office. Hope you're having an awesome day, and I hope the audio is coming through okay because um, I'm not sure how the um, the service is here. I'm trying to do everything that I can to make sure that the the feed is clear and good, so hopefully you guys are able to hear me uh, pretty good. So um, we're in a series on the podcast talking about parables, and we're in the second week of this stuff. And so yesterday we spoke to you about the parable of the talents. And so today, I want to read you uh, from one of the really popular, really famous, really well-known parables, and it's found in Luke chapter 10, and it's called the parable of the Good Samaritan. So uh, let's check this out. Let's read this story. It says, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied. How do you read it? And Jesus answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. When he was attacked by robbers, they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So to a Levite went, and when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side as well. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and he took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for an extra expense you may have. Which of these things 
The, which of these three did you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of a robber? And I'm really what I want to do today is I just want to leave you with that question when you read this story. This, 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 this religious man comes to Jesus and he says, okay, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus begins to question him. We, uh, we lost a great man today, um, Ravi Zacharias, who is one of my heroes in the faith. And what I, faith and what I love is, is that he operates uh, with people who want to discuss with him the same way that Jesus does, and that is just to ask questions. Um, you know, it's not always to have the answers. It's Sometimes it's to just ask the right question. And that's something that Ravi always taught me, and that's what Jesus does. He says, well, what does the Scripture say? And he, say, he answers. He says, well, the Scripture says that we should be uh, loving God and loving our neighbor as ourselves. And so when Jesus heard that answer from the man, Jesus says, well, then you've answered correctly. And he says, but, 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 who is my neighbor? In other words, who do I have to love? And Jesus goes on to tell a story that is so significant. And I want to encourage you. Listen, this is, this is tough subject matter today. And that's why I'm going to stay right on the surface. I'm not going to give you any supernatural revelation that probably you've never heard before. I, there are things in this story I could go into and I could show you some symbolic things. But, you know, the truth of the matter is, is if we can't, if we can't understand the simple things from the Scripture, then we'll never be able to grasp the deeper things. So the simple part is this. You're called to go and to love everybody. Just tell yourself that. Everybody. That's what this story is about, man. And it says that there was a man who was beaten and left for dead, a Jewish man. And it says that a priest comes by. The priest doesn't kick him while he's down. The priest doesn't attack the man. The priest doesn't rob him a second time. The priest, all he does is ignore the fact that that man is broken and hurting, and he goes to the other side of the road, and he passes by him. Then it says that a Levite, which is another type of priest in their day, um, of, the, of the, the, the tribe of the Levites, those were the priests, he also did the same thing. He crossed over the other side and passed by. Now again, he didn't hurt the man even more, but he didn't show love. And what I mean by that is he was not actively trying to help and assist the man in need. And man, I, I find myself doing this all the time. And I know that there are those of you right now that, that you would feel the exact same, that, that you're not kicking people while they're down. That's not really your lifestyle. That's not your attitude. That's not your prerogative. You're not hurting people even more that are hurt and broken. But you are acting indifferently. And let me tell you something. I just want to be real with you. When we act indifferently in a world full of hurting and broken people, it breaks the heart of God. God does not want us to live a life where we are indifferent to those that are hurting and broken, but He wants us to actively engage those. And listen, ministry would be so much better if everyone understood that you are called into ministry. That's one of the things about this story, is it wasn't the priest's job, it wasn't the Levite's job, it was a Samaritan. We're going to get to that in just a second. But it reminds us that we have an obligation to be ministers for the kingdom of God. It is not just the priest's job. It is not just the Levite's job. And that's one of the things that makes ministry in this season so difficult, is there are so many people who look to the pastors and the leaders of the church to do the ministry of the church. It is not our job to do the ministry of the church. It is our job to equip the saints to do ministry, the ministry of the church. It is our job to equip you to go out and to know that you can make a difference in hurting and broken people. That is what God wants to see you do. And that's what this story is about, man, to let you know that you have a calling, that there is a priesthood of all believers, that you have a calling to go out to the hurting and the broken people and not to just pass by them and not just to say, oh, I'm going to pray for you and I'm going to leave them in that moment and maybe not even remember to pray for them or even if I do remember to pray for them, do nothing in the moment where I can actually engage them and make a difference in their life. Stop passing people by. Listen to me. If you don't hear anything else I say, listen to me, church. Stop passing people by that are hurting and broken every single day and wishing that those hurting and broken people would get better when you're doing nothing to impact their life. The love that Jesus tells us about here is an active love. The man not only bandaged his wounds, not only did he lift the man up, place him on his own ride and carry him to the end, but paid the bill, 
paid the bill for the man and even said, even if it costs more than I've done right now, I'm willing to come back and pay more. How many times have we said that we want to make a difference in somebody's life and the moment they hurt us, the moment they turn their back on us, we are not willing to go back and continue to pay the price to see their life healed, to see their life touched. This shows us that we have to be willing to go back again and again and again to make payment, to do whatever it takes to see hurting and broken, broken people healed. That is what you're called to do if you didn't know this. You are called as a child of God to see hurting and broken people healed. And you can be a huge part of that. And what's even more interesting is the fact that this Samaritan that stopped was the bitter enemy of this man. This was not uh, just some obscure person. It was very significant that Jesus says, hey, the Samaritan man stopped by. Why did he stop by? Because, I mean, why did Jesus say that he stopped by? Because Jesus wanted us to understand that even when it's an enemy, that we have got to understand that that person is not our enemy. What they're going through is something that we should be trying to help and assist. We should be trying to bring healing to broken people, even when those broken people seem as if they are our bitter enemies. Now, this is tough stuff today. I know um, that some of you guys are watching going, man, this is just a tough pill to swallow, and it is. But I'm telling you, this is the ministry that you and I have been called to. So my challenge to you today is this. Let's go find broken and hurting people to heal. Can you do this with me? Come on, those of you that are listening, watching, however it is that you're engaging this podcast today on YouTube, Facebook, iTunes, whatever it is, whatever, whatever it is, let's take a moment right now and say, okay, God, send me to make a difference in somebody's life that is hurting and broken today. Come on, let's pray for this right now. Father, this is tough. It's tough teaching. This is a tough parable. This was a tough lesson that you taught here in the story. But God, it's, it, it's to your very heartbeat. God, we have to understand that we have all been given a role in ministry to go heal broken and hurting people. To find people who the enemy has beaten down. To find people who the enemy has robbed. To find people who the enemy is leaving for dead. God, and we've got to go and we've got to bring life. We've got to bring healing. So I just pray for all of us today. God, even as I'm here at Lincoln County High School handing out gift bags from Faith Community Church to the senior, the graduating class of 2020, God, I hope and pray that today I will find someone, even in this graduating class, that is broken and hurting, God, that I could bring life and healing today. God, make it where we don't miss these opportunities, where we don't miss these moments, but we engage them every chance that we get. Use us as ministers and leaders in the kingdom of God today. And not just today, as we've heard this story, but God, let us be mindful of this every day so that we're trying to do this every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, man. Thank you guys so much for joining with us today. Hopefully, again, hopefully the audio and everything came through clearly and good. Um, and uh, I hope that, um, that you'll take this word, man, and that you will put it, uh, to practice in your life. And this will not just be something you hear. This will be something you will do. Love you guys. See you tomorrow for the five before.